Thanks for joining us as we continue our exploration of differential calculus. In our previous lesson, you studied one of the essential concepts of calculus, limits. Today we'll introduce another crucial concept, derivatives. Our emphasis will be on the use of derivatives. First, you'll learn how the derivative is used to solve a classic problem in mathematics called the tangent line problem. Then you'll learn how derivatives are used to calculate velocity, acceleration, and other rates of change. We'll conclude with a look at differentiation rules, that is, how to efficiently calculate the derivatives of a variety of functions. So let's begin with the tangent line problem. We'll consider a curve given by y equals f of x, and draw a line that touches the curve at the point p. This line is called the tangent line to the graph of f at p. Our problem is to give a precise definition of the tangent line. We can define any non-vertical line by specifying a point on the line and the slope of the line. For the tangent line, we've specified the point P. The problem that remains is to find the slope of the tangent line at P. To solve the problem, recall what you've learned about the slope of a line. Consider a non-vertical line passing through the points x1, y1, and x2, y2. The slope is given by the change in y values, divided by the change in x values. That's y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. The letter m is often used to denote slope. The change in y is written using the Greek uppercase letter delta, which resembles a triangle. Similarly, delta x is used to represent the change in x. Now we'll write the slope formula using functional notation. That is, we'll let y equal f of x. Then we can write the point x1, y1 as x1, f of x1. And we can write the point x2, y2 as x1 plus delta x, f of x1 plus delta x. Substituting these values into the slope formula, we have m equals f of x1 plus delta x minus f of x1 divided by delta x. Now we'll return to the tangent line problem. We need to find the slope of the line, but we know the coordinates of only one point on it, the point P with coordinates C, F of C. Without a second point on the line, we can't use the standard slope formula. So we'll find another line that approximates the tangent line for which we can use the slope formula. We draw the line through P and a second point on the curve called Q. This new line is called a secant line, and its slope is given by the difference quotient, f of c plus delta x minus f of c, all divided by delta x. To find closer and closer approximations, we let q approach p. As q approaches p, the secant lines approach the tangent line. We can say that the tangent line is the limit of the secant lines as q approaches p. More specifically, we can say that the slope of the tangent line is the limit of the slopes of the secant lines as q approaches p. Then we can write the slope of the tangent line in precise mathematical form. It's the limit as delta x approaches zero of the difference quotient f of c plus delta x minus f of c divided by delta x. So we found the slope of the tangent to the curve at the point p. That means we've solved the tangent line problem for this example. We'll generalize the solution with the formal definition of the tangent line with slope m. If f is defined on an open interval containing c, and the limit, as delta x approaches 0, of f of c plus delta x minus f of c divided by delta x, exists and equals m, then we call the line passing through c f of c with slope m the tangent line to the graph of f at the point c f of c.